Hey everyone, welcome. I'm so excited to be diving into Shadow Empire, a really, really, really awesome 4X strategy game, which I'm I'm very excited to be diving into. Um, it's a really deep, um, really interesting uh, game, which takes place, as you can see, uh, here in the late stage of human civilization, around years like 7,000, 8,000. Um, where humanity has spread out into the stars, um, has colonized many planets, um, and then a dissolution war basically, basically isolates each one of these planets from the others. And we start back with very little technology. So we're going to be checking out um, how far we can survive on this planet. There are typically um other alien life forms and raiders and other enemies and other factions that we need to contend with so as always this first episode is just going to focus on world generation um like con contextual setting and, and all that stuff if you just want the um if you just want gameplay go ahead and skip to the next episode and we'll dive into setting up the world here this first episode is going to be a little bit of a tutorial around that. Um, a little bit more of a let's play tutorial than a um, than an actual just like, what does each thing do? Um, but I will walk you through quite a bit here. Uh, we're going to be playing on a large supersized class. There are a variety of different uh, classes that we can play with. Some of them part of the uh, Oceania DLC. Um, we're going to be playing with a Siwa class today. There's also a Moon class over here hiding behind me. Um, but the Siwa class is interesting. It allows us to um, have a little bit of water, a little bit of life, uh, a variety of, of interesting things that I think are going to be fun to play with. So we'll play on the Siwa class. For history of this planet, uh, we're going to select a few things here. I've already selected spread out in alien life. Um, alien life means that there's likely going to be some evolution of life on this planet, sometimes sentient, sometimes not, uh, and then we'll do spread out uh, in terms of how far um, human civilizations are, or, you know, the uh, the major civilizations are from each other. Um, I think that'll be fun. Okay, let's go ahead and dive into that. You can also tweak some of those others if you want, if you just want to play like a Robinson Crusoe and you just want to go against the minor factions, whatever. Um, but I think this will be the most fun, a little bit more challenging, too. Um, we're going to do the detailed planet generation, so that's what I've set here for the generation settings. Uh, and then Fog of War. And because this is a, a sort of a let's play um, tutorial and not sort of a just overall, I'm going to be doing uh, the complete Fog of War. Though you can choose other options here, right? So. Uh, after colonization would mean that we get to see it now, but after we colonize, um, then we don't get to see the, the planet anymore. Uh, no map otherwise complete. And there's a variety of different options that you can play with here, but I think um, this complete fog of war will do us nicely. I like the sort of um, whatever happens, happens component or aspect. Of it. I don't get to like farm for a good map. A number of human players will just play with one. Number of initial zones will start with just the city states, and the number uh, number of initial armies will just have the militia. We can get more zones. We can get more armies per zone. I don't think we need that. I think this is going to be totally fine. In terms of story modules, we'll just go with all three. Development and technology. I don't know why it starts at level three. It's kind of weird, but we'll start with tech level three, and we'll do uh, air force enabled. In terms of development speed, we'll be on the slowest epic game. And then organizational level, we're, we're going to start with just the Supreme Command Council. Uh, starting with more councils is a little bit easier, I think. Um, and so starting with the Supreme Command Council and working our way up to those various councils will be a little bit more of a challenge. And then difficulty level, uh, we'll just set to regular and have give AI a little bit more time to think so that um, I think that just make, gives them the option to make better moves, um, and, and that should be good. Um, now we choose our planet. So here I'm going to roll for a decent planet. I'm looking for a planet, first and foremost, that has a map size that is 
um, as large as possible. That's about 213 by 88, I think. So, um, close, but right there. Um, and then we'll take a look at some of these other things as well. So we can see that this 213 by 88 is 6 billion years old, has a pretty decent gravity. The temperature is about 22 degrees Celsius. You know what? I'm actually pretty happy with this planet. Um, it's a little bit of an older planet, so it's been around. The, the geology might, you know, there might not be as many volcanoes or, or something like that, so that's um, fine. The, each day is about 34 hours long here. The tilt is 22 degrees, um, which means that we'll have some variance in the seasons, uh, especially at the North and the South Pole, uh, and even at the equator there will be some as well. Uh, a planet in a slightly eccentric and slightly fast orbit around a bright yellow G0 star, or 1.33 light years away from itself. And I'm happy with that. I, I think that'll be fun. We'll, we'll go ahead and dive in and see how it goes. Okay, uh, and now the geology of the planet's being generated. So here we can see that there are 5% oceans, 4% uh, mountains. We actually don't have much variance in the seasons here at all. Um, there seem to only be uh, a winter and a early summer and late summer here. Interesting. Um, the rainfall is pretty low. We're going to keep re-rolling this until we get a little bit of a higher rainfall. That'll mean that our population can uh, gain water. Um, I think even having some oceans would be good here as well. So I'm going to just re-roll here for a little bit until we get something that I like. All right, and I think I found a planet with an interesting enough geology. We've got about 420 millimeters of water rainfall a year. 11% uh, are oceans, 81 plains, and 8% mountains. I think that's good. Um, the tropics are pretty stable here. Same with the Arctic. Antarctic, we get a little bit warmer weathers in summer and winter, respectively. Um, all right, sounds good. Let's go ahead and dive in um, to the next portion of the world generation. So the next thing we need to look into uh, is the ecology, I believe, um, or the, the biosphere. So here we can see that uh, there is a, a little bit of uh, life. There was abiogenesis, uh, 5,515 billion or million years ago. Uh, types of species include protocellular organisms, bacteria, algae, seaweed, sponge analogs, coral analogs, mostly water things, uh, some vertebrate analogs, um, crustaceans, squid, vascular plants, things like that. Um, ultimately, there are also some large herbivores uh, that are at the top of the evolution life form. It resembles a vertebrate analog. Chemistry is water carbon. Um, and then there's also some sentient life forms, the Ternicephaloid sapien. The evolutionary branch of Ternicephaloid has also given rise to a sentient species. Um, alien natives class uh, cephaloid present on this planet. We have cloud forests. Alien tissue is uh, zero value at about 40% oxygen in here. I'm going to re-roll this a few times just so we get something uh, maybe a little bit more interesting and I will be right back. Alright, so here we've got something that has a good value for alien tissue nu nutrition. I'm not exactly sure um, the uh, value of that. We also have a new evolution life form, a large carnivore, resembles a mollusk uh, and is an oxygen breather. And then in terms of sentient life form, we have the multi uh, sapiens, a yeah. class of vermoid present on this planet. We have 41% oxygen, 56% nitrogen, uh, almost 1.7% 1, 1. CO2, uh, a third of a percent of argon, and 11.11%. 11. 11%. Um, I think that's pretty good. Let's go ahead and dive in with that biosphere. We don't have any issues here uh, in terms of being able to farm uh, and have our uh, human atmosphere, like whether or not there are any hazards within the atmosphere for humans. So I think that's good. I'm, I'm pretty excited about that. Don't really have any issues here. Same with the xenobiology. Next comes colonization. 
Uh, here we can see in the sidebar the various things that happened uh, during the colonizing periods here. Um, of almost 1,200 years of colonization. Um, I'm going to re-roll this because I want a little bit of mining. I want a little bit more agriculture. Maybe a little bit less services, uh, ultimately. Um, and I will be right back when I find something that fits that bill. Alright, and I think I have an interesting mix here now. Uh, so, Mariro C was colonized in the year 7,690. It received colonists for only 305 years. We have seven zones populated. Hmm, that seems kind of like not very many. Maybe we actually re-roll that to get... I don't know. You know what? That's fine. I'm excited with it. Let's do... Let's do that. 44%. Um, let's go ahead and continue that. 44% agriculture, 15% mining, 40% service economy. I think that'll be interesting at the very least. There may not be much out there. It's only been for 305 years. It's a pretty barren planet in terms of, of human expansion. Here we can see we've got some scavengers, hunters, zero raiders, 84% farmers. Go ahead and re-roll excuse me, re-roll this a little bit um, and see if we can find something that is a little bit more uh, of an even spread here. I mean, I like that there's a fair amount of farmers here. But maybe a few raiders wouldn't be bad. I don't mind a few raiders. So recalculate the dissolution more. Okay, we only have hunters and farmers here. I'm going to pause and I'll be right back once I find something that's a little bit more appropriate. Alright, here we are. So I've found a planet uh, or an a cop... Uh, an universe where we uh, have 12% scavengers, 29% hunters, and 58% farmers. Um, the dissolution war reached Mariro C in the year 7995. War consumed all. Technology fell to barbaric levels in order a, a, in over a century of warfare and collapse. In the early phases of the dissolution war, the battles that raged across the planet took an enormous toll. Over 1.3 million soldiers and civilians perished in the merciless battlefields. To make things worse, nuclear fallout claimed the lives of many. After planetary government had disintegrated, anarchy and technology loss did not help at all in making the population self-sufficient again. Whatever rem rem remnants were left after were destroyed by structural starvation. It is estimated that total loss of life of the dissolution war and its long multi-generational aftermath has claimed over 5 million lives leaving only 1 million survivors left on this planet. Keep in mind that over 237 years have passed since the distant war started. Over the long aftermath, or dark age, decades that followed the total collapse, the population levels have been under stress. See what all has occurred? Several major companies evacuated their high-tech installations from the planet in 12 AD that uh, the enemies of Vozoniria were nuked, uh, or nuked uh, Vozoniria, AD 77-8. That the Rivia was nuked, 8103. Unknown and extremely virulent disease wiped out Vomanum, 8117. Extremely another deadly disease in Vomanum, 8190. A religious cult briefly takes prominence in weapons to destroy Vomanu. Not only was it wiped out by a disease, but it was then new. Interesting. Okay. So let's go with that planet. Uh, we've got 8% mountains, 81% plains, 11 oceans, 120 millimeters of rain per year. Looks good. Let's go ahead and start the game. And we'll dive into just a bit of the um, colony creation here. So, next thing we need to do, name ourselves. We will be the Pebble Federation. Uh, you, you will be the High Pebble. Okay, and your primary color is going to be black. And gray. We'll do a vertical line, and let's use a symbol like, hmm, a 
best pebble I can find here. Alright, sounds good. Let's do it. The great cities were destroyed in the Dissolution War. The remainders of humanity dispersed into the wastelands, hiding, scavenging, and fighting, trying to scrape out a living, trying to survive. The forefathers of our Union were among them. They were not alone. Other survivors fleeing the destroyed cities had followed them. Those, these others were aggressive and tried to enslave our forefathers. How did they manage to pacify their enemies? Uh, they fought at a huge cost that, and, and they chased them off. Upon stability returned, there were those that, who did better than other, others, who were the people that grew richer and more powerful than the masses. Those artisans that worked hard and supplied goods and services that were needed. Find plus 50. At around the same time your father was born, a rebellion took place against the leaders and principles of our union. It was a rebellion against... The authoritarian and dictatorial leader. Let's go against the corruption and lack of progress. We want more. We strive for more. And this is where I'm going to end the episode. Thanks for watching, everyone. Let me know what you think in the comments below. If you haven't yet, make sure to hit subscribe and we'll catch up in the next episode where we're going to dive into a little bit more of this gameplay here. Thanks for watching.